In this final video, we'll be exploring the specific details of Baron Trump's time travels from all the sources we have available. Baron Trump was born March 20th, 2006. In the year 2015, or at a later date depending on the reality, civil unrest breaks out in the United States. In all cases mentioned by Titter, Baron or Ingersoll Lockwood, the war is triggered by socialists from the urban cities in response to the election of an outsider. As the war escalates, the Capitol building is destroyed and the United States fractures between North, South, and West. According to Titter, Russia intervenes on behalf of one element within America. The Civil War becomes a global conflict as China involves itself and a limited nuclear exchange occurs. By the end of the conflict, over 3 billion lives are lost due to the war, starvation, and disease. Titter claims the rebels are defeated by the Russian-American side. Civilization recovers despite this war, although it's unrecognizable by today's standards. Trump's family survives this conflict and thrives financially. Many years later, Baron Trump travels to the Ural Mountains in Russia to visit a community that went underground during the war to explore their cave network. According to the 19th century books, it was during this exploration that Baron discovers a time portal and is able to travel to alternate realities. The origins of this time machine are unknown, although it is believed to be a crude prototype. Sometime afterwards, the technology is perfected using the notes left behind by Nikola Tesla and John Trump. Baron finances engineers from General Electric to develop a working time machine. Since Barron had the most experience with the prototype and for financing the development, Trump is chosen to go back in time to conduct research. During one of his travels, it's possible Barron met Ingersoll Lockwood in the late 19th century. John Titter admitted to traveling across time for research before he made contact with his father. We don't know why he shared his adventures with the struggling author. Perhaps Barron felt sorry for the lawyer turned author. Regardless of the motivation, it shows Barron was willing to do more than just simple research. Lockwood was clearly inspired by the information given to him by Barron. Looking beyond the artistic license of his interpretation of events, we have a glimpse into Barron's life before the time machine. It's not clear when the time traveler made first contact with Donald Trump. It's reasonable to assume Trump would not at first believe a random man claiming to be his unborn son from the future, as any of us wouldn't either. Perhaps this began to change when Barron mentioned things about the family that's not public knowledge. You gotta listen to me. I got enough practical jokes for one evening. Good night, future boy. No, wait, Doc. Doc, the, the, the bruise. The bruise in your head. I know how that happened. You told me the whole story. You were standing on your toilet and you were hanging a clock and you fell and you hit your head on the sink. And that's when you came up with the idea for the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. Barron instructed his father to look into Tesla's notes left behind by his uncle and compare it with artifacts brought back from the future. Trump listened and eventually agreed to travel with Barron in his time machine. One of the first places they visited was ancient Egypt. This is where he began to understand timelines, Keck, memetics, and how he could have an impact on them according to the 4chan poster. When Trump returned to his own time, he began to use these experiences to accumulate wealth and fame under Barron's watchful guidance. If it has ever seemed to you that Trump has a bizarre ability to accurately predict and manipulate his opponents to his advantage, it may not be a coincidence. The truth is, there are foreordained events. Yes, there have been setbacks like Trump filing Chapter 7 for his casinos. But the legacies of these bankruptcies have made an impact on millions of people in those communities. What may appear to be a negative for Trump's empire may have been a positive in ways we're not aware of. 
Suppose a man and woman were to meet at the Plaza Hotel in Atlantic City in 2005, fall in love, get married, and have a child. This child eventually grows up to be the next Adolf Hitler. However, in our timeline, the Plaza Hotel closed their doors in 1992 due to Trump's bankruptcy. This couple never meets, therefore, our history is saved without the public knowing otherwise. However, one of Trump's biggest regrets, according to the 4chan poster, was 9-11. Despite his best efforts to warn people as John Titter, he was ultimately unable to prevent the terror attack. You see, Trump could not raise the alarm bells without arousing suspicion. The terror attacks flew under the radar of the FBI and CIA. How would Trump receive his intel when our intelligence services could not? Would he not be investigated for uncovering such a deadly attack? Keep in mind, Trump's ultimate mission is to avoid the nuclear war his future son foretold. Ultimately, Trump's goals cannot jeopardize or disrupt Barron's mission. In 1980, Trump attempted to purchase the World Trade Center when he was 33 years old. Scrape up a down payment for a little fixer-upper in your neighborhood? Take a look at my next guest. There's a report around Wall Street that this is what he has in mind. This is Donald Trump, 33 years old. And some people think that he wants to buy the World Trade Center, the 110-story Manhattan skyscraper that anyone can pick up if they've got the coins. Donald Trump, as I say, is just 33 years old. He took his father's rather modest by current standards real estate empire in Brooklyn and expanded it considerably. He now has an apartment for sale in a new Trump building called the Trump Tower going up on Fifth Avenue. There it is. Trump designed plans to remodel the building to sustain terror attacks. Unfortunately, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey scaled back its intent to sell the building outright and opted to only sell the rights to its name and did so by 1986 to Guy F. Tozzoli for $10 million. The opportunity never presented itself again. Donald Trump was originally against the notion of running for president, believing he could preserve our timeline from the shadows. This, this sounds like political presidential talk to me, and I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you, would you ever? Probably not, but I, I do get tired of seeing the country ripped Why off. Why would you not? I just don't think I really have the inclination to do it. I love what I'm doing. I really like it. Also, I, it doesn't pay as well. No, nah, it doesn't. <laughs> In 1987 on Larry King, and again in 1988 on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Trump said he was not inclined to run, but would only do it if the country were in such a mess. These sentiments began to change after the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. It soon became clear that there was another party influencing the timeline besides Barron. The most terrifying aspect of the 4chan post were the cryptic references that there are other agents working against Trump on behalf of the Clintons. Trump's first attempt to defeat her happened in the late 90s. To be specific, Trump hatched a plan to shame and discredit her husband so that she would not be able to run for public office. While the plan succeeded, in some regard, a temporal incursion by Hillary from the future prevented any lasting damage. The Clintons moved to New York to start working on her political career. In the same year of 2000, Trump announced his intent to run for president under the Reform Party, but the campaign never went beyond the exploratory phase. Trump and Clinton, as representatives of their temporal agents, attempted to smooth relations over. The Clintons attended Trump's wedding with Ivanka in 2005 and later Trump attended Chelsea Clinton's wedding soon thereafter. But this was a ruse. We really must analyze the motivation behind Clinton's affiliates. Not all of Trump's enemies in this timeline have been dealt with. If Barron's mission was to prevent a civil war from turning into a nuclear holocaust, then we must assume Clinton's allies want a confrontation that ends in their victory. Yet we must remember that Russia and the conservatives win this confrontation in Barron's timeline. They must change the outcome of any conflict that arises. What's the current narrative in regards to Russia today? 
uh, that Russian officials and even Vladimir Putin ordered a cyber campaign to help President Trump. But one thing that they've been struggling to find is the issue of collusion, whether there has been any so far between Russian officials and Trump officials, because there are a lot of leads and a lot of questions that they have yet to answer. A civil war with the globalists supporting the socialist rebels without Russia backing the conservatives would be a crushing blow for the right, eliminating Baron Trump's timeline altogether. The 2008 election was an important year. There's speculation that perhaps Clinton was supposed to win the 2008 election with Trump defeating her re-election efforts in 2012. The rage from the left against Trump could have boiled over into an all-out civil war. In this scenario, the nuclear confrontation of 2015 would have been fulfilled as John Titter predicted. Luckily, this didn't happen. The only candidate who ran in 2008 who didn't want a war with Russia was Barack Obama. John McCain and Hillary Clinton have proven themselves to be extremely hostile towards the Russians. Again in 2012, Mitt Romney called Russia the greatest geopolitical threat of the 21st century. What's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America? You said Russia. Not Al-Qaeda. You said Russia in the 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back because you know, the Cold War has been over for 20 years. Russia, I indicated, is a geopolitical foe. All the options. Uh, they, what do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. So I, when I was Secretary of State, advocated, and I advocate today, a no-fly zone and safe zones. How much of a threat to global security do you consider the Russian President Vladimir Putin? I think he is the premier and most important threat, more so than ISIS. Despite Trump and Obama being diametrically opposed to one another on every single issue, there was no reason for Trump to win in 2012 and accidentally trigger the war without Clinton. Obama's presidency certainly pushed our timeline into uncharted territory, as it's unknown if the events are preordained and only delayed. Instead of a nuclear war in 2015, there was the Great Meme War that took its place, culminating in the resurrection of an ancient Egyptian deity by internet wizards. Soon, meme magic would decide the 2016 presidential election. Despite the best efforts by the temporal agents and occultists to stop Trump, he would go on to win the White House by defeating Hillary Clinton once and for all. Oh, but that's not the final chapter of the great meme wars. Seth Rich uncovered the surface layer of information involving the DNC and was assassinated by Podesta's temporal agents for leaking vital information to WikiLeaks. In fact, many Clinton enemies have had mysterious deaths that were covered up. Vince Foster, who committed suicide with two gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Gareth Williams, who committed suicide by stuffing his naked body into a duffel bag, and various other strange circumstances. Although there has been no nuclear war, the temporal Cold War continues to lurk in the shadows. If you enjoyed this work, and you'd like for me to do voice work for you, contact Ron Miller at MyBaseVoice.com.